Hello, welcome to Resub Coder. We've been using methods all along the course of this tutorial series. We have kind of taken them for granted. We use write line and read line methods located on the console class, and we will talk about classes in another tutorial. And even the whole code that we wrote in the past tutorials was located inside a method called main, which runs when the program starts. What is a method? What does it do and how to create one that suits our purpose? That's the topic of this video. First up, let's get something important out of the way. Some of you might have heard the term function. A function in math basically takes an input and gives us some kind of an output. It's like a cookie making conveyor belt, and I wish I had one. You put in all of the ingredients, let it do its thing, and at the other end it spits out tasty cookies. Methods do just the same thing and they aren't any different from functions. The only difference is in the name. A function inside a class is called a member function or a method. So now we know the purpose of methods. Let's create ourselves our own method, shall we? Let's say that we want to concatenate two strings. So here we have a code which is not special by any means. We just concatenate two strings together and then we print out the result. How can we simplify this and maybe add a bit of security checks? Like the name cannot be just an empty string because that's invalid. Yes, you're right. We will put this concatenation inside a method. So let's write a method with an empty body and then I will explain what each of the things mean. We want to go outside the static void main method and we want to write static string concatenate parentheses string first and string second. And to create a body of the method, we want to put here two curly braces. The first word static is something that we don't need to worry about just yet. But if you really want to know what it does, it's telling that this method is bound to the whole class and not to an instance of the class. If you understand what I just said, that's awesome, but this tutorial is probably not for you. And if you don't understand what I've just said, that's completely cool because I will explain it in another tutorial. The first string is a return type. Something like the cookie that comes out of the conveyor belt. Actually, now we have an error because the compiler expects this method to return a string. But it doesn't return anything at the moment. If you don't want the method to return anything, you can use void keyword much like in the main method above, right here. If we change this string to void, we wouldn't have any errors. But we want to change it back to string. Then comes the name of the method concatenate and inside the parentheses are parameters. This is what we need to pass into a method when we are calling it. Much like when we are calling write line method on the console class, we specify a string over here. And then inside the concatenate method we can operate on these two parameters. So what should this method do? It should obviously create a concatenated string this is pretty simple and then we want to use a return keyword to literally return a string from this method. And actually we don't even need to use this string concatenated at all. We can copy this concatenation expression, delete the string over here and then we want to replace concatenated with this expression. And I just want to add that if your method consists of a single statement or basically a single expression we can just copy this expression again. We can delete the body of the method as it is now and put here an equal and greater sign and then paste here the expression and put a semicolon after there. This is called an expression bodied method and it's just pretty cool to know about because it can shorten your code significantly. But in this tutorial, we're gonna keep it simple and classic and I am gonna revert this method back to a classical method and not an expression bodied method. All right, and now let's use this method. So instead of console.writeLine and specifying full name over here, we are gonna specify concatenate and the parameters are first name and second name. Awesome, and now let's run this. All right, John Coder, just as expected. Cool, so we have written a method. But we didn't spare ourselves from any effort by doing so. Instead of just simply concatenating two strings by using the plus character, we need to call a method. 
This situation quickly changes when we want to check if either of the names is empty, and if it is, we want to indicate that an error must have occurred. Doing this stuff without a separate method would be okay for concatenating just one name, but what about two or three names? We would have to write practically the same code three times. What a waste of time. Let's see how the empty name checking code would look like inside the main method. So when we go back here, we can delete this string full name and let's create a string checked full name. And if first name is equal to empty string, then we want to set checked full name to error. We want to do a similar thing for the second name and else checked full name is equal to concatenated first name and second name. All right. And now when we change John to be empty string, and we change this console.write line to output checked full name. And when we run the program, the checked full name is equal to error. All right. And now imagine writing this code twice or three times. That's not something I'd like to do for sure. That's when methods save the day. Let's expand the concatenate method we've written previously. Over here, we want to write if first is equal to empty string, we want to return error. And if second is equal to empty string, we also want to return error. And the last return statement can stay as it is now. We do not need to use else if and else clauses here, because when a return statement is ran, the execution of the method stops and it returns to the caller of the method. Had we used them, the method would do exactly the same thing though. And now let's test it inside the main method. So the first name is empty and the second name is coder. And now we want to write line concatenate first name and second name. And now when we run this, it should print out error and it does, which is totally cool. All right. And now let's say that we want to have a method to concatenate three strings and also check if they are empty. Do we have to create a method with a different name? Well, we could, but we can also utilize method overloading. Overloaded methods differ in their parameters. In this case, our previous concatenate method had two parameters and this new one is going to have three of them. The code inside the method is going to be practically the same, but we will operate on one more string, the third string. So again, static string concatenate. Notice that the name is unchanged and string first, string second and string third. And we can practically copy the contents of the first concatenate method, paste them in here. And now we want to add one more check. If third is equal to empty string, we also want to return error. And then if none of the strings are equal to empty strings, we obviously want to return first plus second plus third. And now when we go back to the main method, when I hold the mouse over the concatenate method, you can see that it says plus one overload. And let's delete these arguments over here. They are going to be Mr. And as you can see, IntelliSense provides us with this one of two information about this method. When I press the up arrow, it adds the third string over here. So Mr. John Coder. Cool. Now when we run this, it's going to print out Mr. John Coder. And when we change, for example, the last string to be an empty string, it's going to print out error. Congratulations! You now know a lot of useful stuff about methods in C Sharp. And if you want to make the newly acquired knowledge stick, check out an exercise on resocoder.com from the link in the description. There will be a few questions and coding assignments from which you will learn so much more. Thank you for watching this video. And if it helped you, please give it a like and also share it. Subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button if you want to get notified about my new videos. Follow me on social media and see you in the next video.